Last we week, algebra, we were doing algebra, and was, the most recent thing you learned was something to do was, with like terms. Now, before terms. we get to what that thing was, I need, someone, that thing was, I need oh, someone to help me. Like what terms? Oh, yeah, like terms? Yeah, Nick. Or, or does someone else wanna step in? Or, or does someone else wanna what, step yeah, in? Do you wanna tell me? What are what, like yeah, do you wanna tell me? Uh, what are okay, like terms? Fantastic. Now, Terms okay, fantastic. Now, let terms that are like each other, let me give you an example though, because a like is kind of a vague word. word. So, for example, I think these terms are like each other. I think these terms are like each other. They both have Are they three. like terms? Are they like terms? They're not like terms. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I notice about these. Correct, they are not like terms. The first thing you've noticed is there's, like, there's multiplication happening in here, isn't there? It's kind of kind of happening on the sly. This is really shorthand for three plus three times a, isn't it? Okay? So there's not just that though. The big thing that I'm looking for that makes these unlike is that you can see there's algebra hanging around here. There's a pronumeral, a variable, an unknown. We've talked about these terms before. And over here, I just have a number, right? So these guys are in fact unlike. But if I change this just a little bit, let's chuck in something like this. Okay, now I have like terms, right? Which terms are the like terms? Yeah, up the back. Uh, Daniel. Three and five. Fantastic. The three and the five. Okay, they are alike because they're both just numbers. No algebra attached, right? So I can, and this is what you did very, very recently, with these like terms, I can collect them. So collecting like terms was the most recent skill that you were developing. Okay, so this would be equal to 8 plus 3a. Okay, let's change one more thing. Let's add another like term onto there. Suppose I said, well, let's do, let's be really interesting. Let's chuck this on the end of everything. Okay. Now again, another like term, but because it's got algebra and it's got the same pronumeral as I have over here, these guys are like terms now, right? Make sense? The 3a and the minus 7a. Really important to catch it. There's a minus sign there, right? And the minus kind of hangs along like a, like a bad smell to the 7a, okay? So you got a 3a and a minus 7a. So when I put them together, when I collect them, what do I get? Fantastic. Well done, Ren. So I've got an 8 minus 4a. And that's, that's how I would do this. Collecting like terms. Okay? Now, one last thing to notice. When we put together this 3a and this minus 7a, the a's didn't disappear. It didn't become like minus 4, as if, oh, I've got a, and I take away a. Right? There's multiplication hiding in there. Right? So what this is really short for is a plus a plus a. And this is short for, what's it short for? A. Hmm, yep. A plus A plus A. Okay, plus plus, except, except it's a, it's a minus sign, isn't it? Right? So it'd be minus A, <laughs> minus A, seven, uh, uh, one more time. There we go. Seven times. Okay. That was collecting like terms. But now we're going to step it up a little bit and you have to be careful because some parts of this are similar and some parts are quite different. Multiplying and dividing terms is what we're going to do. And even though you can see on your um, textbook, these are broken up into two separate exercises. They're really the same idea because division is just multiplying in reverse. Okay? So let's have a go at these, right? Let's pick up right at question two. We're going to go straight into question two. We'll do A together first. We'll do a few of these, okay? So Please, with me, it's not going to take a huge amount of time, write the question with me, 5 times 3y. Okay? Now, when you are multiplying these things together, in some senses, it doesn't matter anymore whether they're like or unlike, because we're multiplying or dividing, they'll go together. Right? So here, I can think about these numbers. Right? This is really short for, well, tell me again, what's 3y an abbreviation of? Yeah, Ethan. Three times Fantastic. Five times three times y, like you just told me. Okay? So now you can see, I can multiply these in any order I like, so I might as well put together these two numbers. Because I'm, I'm good at putting together numbers, right? So five times three is? Fifteen. Fifteen. 
Excellent. So I can do 15 times Y, but I can just say Y. There we go. So I'm done. I've multiplied together everything sort of jammed together in one piece. Okay. Let's skip over to F. Okay, let's skip over to F. So I've got 2x. Again, remember how we... Whoa, whoa. It's on my desk. So, oh. hey, right. what's your what's your next exam? Um, tomorrow in the morning. In the morning, I'll be there. All right, thank you. Right. You always have to take something valuable when you lend something. I took his driver's license. Okay. Oh. I didn't know he had to come back, which he did. All right, where were we? Sorry. Took, how did you take so his driver's license? Stuff. He gave it to me. <laughs> 2x, you know 2x, you remember we did a little bit of a note on how you shouldn't write your x's like times. Just do whatever you can to not confuse them with each other. 2x times 8y. Okay, yep. Um, you know how you said that you'd have this the next morning? How would he get to school? Oh, he doesn't need to. He, oh, okay. I know, he's just, he's just going to walk. It's alright, I've thought of these things. Now, again, this time without writing it, just doing it in my head, I'm going to remember that this is 2 times x times 8 times y. Okay? This is just one long... Does anyone know there's a word that starts with p that's the result when you multiply things together? Do you remember what it's called? Yeah. A product. Fantastic. This is just one long product. This times this times this times this, etc. Okay? So if it's 2 times x times 8 times y, I'm going to put the 2 and the 8 together at the front, right? And then I've got the x and the y hanging out at the end because I usually put my pronouns at the end. In alphabetical order would be nice. So now you can tell me what's this going to be equal to? 16xy. 16 16 now the x and the y, they don't go away, right? They don't disappear. I don't know what the numbers are equal to, so I just have to leave them there. Right? They're still unknowns. Okay, let's go for a trickier one. Let's go for let's go for R because that's a bit of a that's a bit of a pain in that one. Shh. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's okay if you start Morgan. Thank you. Would be totally okay if it was silent, but it's not. So. All right. Now, this one is a bit trickier, and you have to be very careful with it. In fact, to help you, if you have another color, it's not necessary, but it'll be super helpful. At least I find it is. Okay? I've got three pronumerals here. H, J, and K in kind of this weirder arrangement, right? So what I want to do is I want to work out how many H's do I have, and how many J's, and how many K's. Okay? Now, this time, like I did before, I'm going to write it out in longhand to make an obvious point, okay? So what's this thing really equal to? It's H times J times K times... You get the idea. Okay, let's write out the whole thing. Okay. Now the reason why this is so helpful is because this will help us get the answer right. How many H's are there? That's the first letter alphabetically. How many H's are there? Two. two. I see two. One, two. So with my other colour, I'll do something like underline them. Okay. So I've got, now I've got two H's, ah, but I'm not adding them, am I? Right? I'm, I'm multiplying them. So that's exactly right. So really, H times H is H squared. Very good. It, it feels like it should be. Oh, i got two H's. Two H. But you'd get two H if you were adding them, right? I'll just write that up here. H plus H is two H, right? But H times H is h squared, right? And it's a really subtle looking difference. But when you write out all the multiplication signs, you can see, oh, it's h times h. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to write, h squared. Okay, I'm not done yet. How many j's are there? That's the next thing alphabetically. There are three. Uh, I'll do this, I'll mark it a little bit differently so I don't confuse them, okay? So I'll circle this, j and j and j. Right? This example is simple enough that you can, a kind, you can kind of do it in your head, but we'll get to examples where it's like, oh, no, no, no. You need to do everything you can to help yourself make sure you don't miss any terms. Okay? So, uh, three J's. 
J times J times J, triple J. Okay. So what so should I write? That's a really bad one. It's J <laughs> cubed. Cubed. Very good. Right? It feels like, oh, three J's. I should write three J. But yeah. you're not adding them, you're multiplying them. So J cubed. Last one, you probably get the point now. How many K's are there? K squared. There's two. K there and a K there. You can use like a jagged line to indicate it. So K squared. Okay, okay. K squared. Done. There you go. See, we put it all together. There are no actual numbers that we know what they are. There's no 15 or 16 hanging out the front. That's all we've got. Question? Yeah, you put like a multiple sign between K squared and Okay, so you could put times here and times here if you liked, but generally when we put the letters together to, to save some space, we don't write the multiplications, okay? We do, we do that with pronumerals. We don't do it with numbers though, because if I wrote five times three as five, three, well that, that means something else, doesn't it? So you can't just jam numbers together, but you can jam pronumerals together, because we're not confusing that with, oh yeah, you know that, that number, HJ. I love that, that's my favorite number. No, we know that that means H times J.